from New Hampshire. Thank you, Mr. President, and I thank my colleague uh, from Mississippi for his remarks about uh, the brave men and women of the United States Navy and their need for support. Uh, Mr. President, I rise today to join my Democratic colleagues in speaking out against the dangerous Trump Care Bill, which is currently being drafted behind closed doors by our Republican colleagues. The secrecy around this bill shows that Senate Republicans know that they cannot defend it to their constituents. That's why Senate Republicans are even refusing to hold a single hearing on the bill. In my state of New Hampshire, you can't pass a bill if it's not had a hearing. And the Senate here in Washington should work the same way. I continue to urge my colleagues to hold public hearings on this bill so that we can examine the bill for ourselves and get feedback from our constituents and stakeholders. We do know that this legislation will be very similar to the House Trump Care Bill, which President Trump himself called mean. And calling it mean is even putting it lightly. Trump care threatens to have devastating impacts on millions of Americans. Today, I'm going to address three specific ways that Trump care is mean to people in New Hampshire and across the nation. First, it undermines the Medicaid program. Second, it hurts our seniors. And third, it continues this administration's efforts to roll back women's access to health care. Mr. President, as governor, I worked to pass and then reauthorize New Hampshire's bipartisan Medicaid expansion plan that provides coverage now to over 50,000 hardworking Granite Staters. And Trump Care, by proposing to repeal Medicaid expansion, hurts many of the hardworking people served now by that expansion program whose care depends on the expansion program being continued. This includes people like Joe from Portsmouth. I met Joe at a round table earlier this year. Joe has a painful precancerous disease that eats at her abdominal organs. She's had it for most of her life. And prior to the Great Recession, she had a job that provided health insurance and allowed her to get treatment for this chronic health condition. But in 2009, Joe was laid off from her job, then unable to find reliable full-time work. So she worked several part-time jobs, but they didn't offer health insurance. In 2012, she desperately needed surgery. She didn't have health insurance. She couldn't get the surgery. Her health declined. The recession continued and her ability to support herself also declined. In 2014, after New Hampshire came together and passed its bipartisan Medicaid expansion program, she was able to get health care coverage. The Medicaid expansion program helps her get 8 to 12 prescriptions, necessarily necessary medical tests, physical therapy, treatments, and specialists. This is also meant that Joe is healthy enough to work again. Trump care would end Medicaid expansion, putting people like Joe at risk. Trump care also changes Medicaid into a per capita cap system. That's a fancy label for massive cuts to the Medicaid program that would force states to choose between slashing benefits reducing the number of people who can get care, or both. Under Trump care, states will be faced with cutting services that children, people with disabilities, and seniors depend on. Which brings me to the second point I'd like to highlight today about this mean bill and who it impacts. Mr. President, it is clear that Trump care would hurt seniors across the Granite State. The majority of nursing home residents in New Hampshire are served by Medicaid. Trump care would jeopardize the
the ability of seniors to stay in nursing homes. It would also threaten services for seniors who receive at-home care. And these cuts to Medicaid are just one of the ways seniors would be hurt under this mean proposal, because Trump care would also create an age tax, letting insurance plans charge older adults five times more than younger people. If you are between the ages of 50 and 64, you will be especially hard hit. According to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, under Trump care, you could face 20 percent higher premiums in 2018, with especially high premium hikes for older Americans. And the AARP opposes Trump care because it would, and this is a quote, make health care less secure and less affordable. Finally, my third point, Mr. President, is that it is clear that Trump care would continue this administration's efforts to roll back women's access to critical health care services, to compete economically on a level playing field. Women must be able to make their own decisions about if and when to start a family. They should not have to pay more than men do for health care, and they should be able to visit providers of their own choice who understand their health care needs. And to fully participate not only in our economy, but also in our democracy, women must be recognized for their capacity to make their own health care decisions just as men are. Under Trump care, if you are a mother, giving birth could now be considered a pre-existing condition. Trump care would also undermine the requirement that insurance companies have to cover essential health benefits, including maternity care. And Trump care's Medicaid cuts would have drastic impacts for women across the country. According to the Congressional Budget Office, Medicaid pays for nearly half of all births in the United States, and it provides health coverage for one in three children across our country. Trump Care also defunds Planned Parenthood, which provides critical primary and preventive health care services to thousands of New Hampshire women, including preventive care, birth control, and cancer screenings. Mr. President, my Democratic colleagues and I are ready to work with anyone who is serious about working to build on the Affordable Care Act and lower health care costs for hardworking people. But what we do not need is legislation that even the President himself admits is mean. I'll continue working with my colleagues to speak out against and defeat Trump care. And I urge the people of New Hampshire and people all across America to keep making their voices heard and make clear that this mean bill is simply unacceptable. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.